வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ரொலாண்டோ ஃப்ராக்சர் லெட் அஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் சி வாட் த எய்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த ரொலாண்டோ ஃப்ராக்சர் ஆர் வி மஸ்ட் get an optimized range of motion of the carpometacarpal joint or the trapeziometacarpal joint of the thumb to achieve this it would be ideal for stable fixation so that early mobilization can be started but this is not possible in all the situations even if we are not able to provide optimal range of motion it is very important to minimize the pain in the moving thumb the range of options that we have for treatment of rolando fracture are as follows closed reduction and thumb splinting or immobilization closed reduction and percutaneous pinning open reduction and internal fixation distraction and external fixation or traction the indication for closed reduction and splinting are extra articular fractures or minimally displaced two part articular fractures that is the bennett fractures with less than 1 mm displacement so the role of closed reduction and thumb splinting is very minimal in rolando fracture however if splinting is going to be done first traction should be applied to correct the flexion deformity this axial traction should be applied on the thumb and simultaneous pressure over the dorsal aspect of the basal diaphysis near the fracture during the application of the cast it is important to exert pressure over the dorsal aspect of the first metacarpal diaphyseal base and from the palmar aspect over the first metacarpal head in this position the cast needs to be applied closed reduction and percutaneous pinning is indicated for rolando fracture patterns with less than 1 mm of displacement or in comminuted fracture patterns not amenable for screw fixation the technique of closed reduction and percutaneous pinning has been discussed in the previous video on management of the bennett fracture this gives a clinical example of a comminuted fracture of the base and mid shaft of the thumb metacarpal which has been managed with closed reduction and percutaneous pinning the indications for open reduction and internal fixation are when there is more than 1 mm of displacement in intra articular fractures which could be either the bennett fracture or the rolando fracture patterns or comminuted fracture fragments which are large enough and amenable for screw fixation we need to remember here that metaphyseal and articular comminution is usually more than what is apparent on x rays these are best assessed with ct scan or traction x rays and it is important to completely analyze the fracture before planning the treatment schedule to perform an open reduction and internal fixation with plate and screws we need to first access the fracture for either the y or the t shaped patterns in the frontal plane that is which have a radial and ulnar fragments a straight dorsal approach is preferred whereas if the fracture pattern is in the sagittal plane with volar and dorsal fragments the radio palmar approach is preferred hence we need to understand the morphology of the fracture before planning the access incision after accessing the fracture preliminary fixation of the articular fragments of the base of the thumb is done with pointed reduction forceps this must be confirmed under direct vision and also using image intensification a preliminary k wire may be inserted perpendicularly to the vertical fracture plane to stabilize the construct additionally for fixation a t shaped plate is best suited a 2.0 mm locking compression plate if additional metaphyseal comminution is noted if conventional non locking plate is used there will be a need for an additional bone graft which can be harvested either from the radius or from the iliac crest the length of the plate must be such that two screws can be fixed in the distal diaphyseal fragment contouring of the plate must be done 
both transversely and longitudinally. A 1.3 mm Rolando fracture hook plate is also available for fixing these fractures. However, if there is severe comminution with very small fracture fragments, there are two options available, external fixation and the method of oblique traction. External fixation is used for comminuted intra-articular fractures. Buschler et al. described the quadrilateral mini external fixation device placed between the thumb and the index metacarpal followed by limited open reduction with K-wires or screws and a cancellous bone graft. The technique of oblique traction is also used for the management of comminuted intra-articular fractures. Though the technique of oblique traction through the thumb metacarpal was analyzed by Gelberman et al., it was originally described by Thoren in 1956. In his original article, he analyzed the different forces acting on this kind of fracture and felt that oblique traction through the metacarpal was the answer to stabilize all these forces and achieve good healing of the fracture. First, a 1 cm incision is made just distal to the abductor pollicis longus insertion and radial and volar to the extensor pollicis brevis tendon. A 1.5 mm K wire is drilled obliquely through the thumb metacarpal in a distal and ulnar direction with a slight volar tilt so that it exits in the thumb index finger web space. The proximal end of the pin is bent 90 degrees and the incision is closed. A forearm cast with a banjo outrigger is applied with the exclusion of the thumb web and rubber band traction is maintained for 4 to 6 weeks. The complications of Rolando fracture and its management are stiffness and osteoarthritis. As expected, these complications are more in the multi-fragmentary forms. Since minimizing pain is a very important aim of management of the Rolando fracture, if there is persistent pain after operative management, no further intervention should be done for a minimum of 6 months. If pain persists even after this and there is radiographic evidence of articular incongruity, arthrodesis of the trapeziometacarpal joint is indicated. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about metacarpal fracture management and phalangeal fractures management. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery.